I wanted to add rule seed support to another module, namely Dr. Simon Sings. All right, so we have a manual. You know what? I'm, I'm going to write the manual part of this first. So we have the manual here, and I'm going to dive straight in. So we're going to add a rule seed JS here. So now if I go like to here, it'll say rule seed 2 in the corner. And then I'm going to define a script which defines two functions called set default rules and set rules. All right. Now I'm going to make it so that the default rules are actually the same. So I'm going to, you know, engineer the list of rules in such a way that we, we end up getting the same list of rules out of it. All right. So here, okay, so var candidate rules, boink. Okay, now here's the thing. Some of these rules are, you know, rules that, like, like for example, we're in the third stage of a module, that's just a yes or no. But some of them have a sort of if. So for example, here, the main condition is the position of this digit blah 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 matches the number of ports on the port plate with the most ports on it. But then it has the sort of fallback for when there are no port plates, right? In which case there's not number of batteries. So I'm actually going to have two separate lists. One is the list of fallbacks and the other one is the list of main rules. So in terms of fallbacks we can have um, for example, the last digit of the serial number is odd. And the last digit of the serial number is even. Maybe also the first digit is odd or even. Um, then let's say, <laughs> excuse me, I'm, I seem to be getting a bit of a hiccup here. Um, all right, there is an odd number of batteries an odd number of ports, an odd number of battery holders, an odd number of port plates, uh, indicators, lit indicators, and unlit indicators. All right, and now I realize that every one of these could say either odd or even. So I'm just going to remove these. And then instead of odd, I'm going to say, um, you know, something like parity. Right, and then I'm going to replace that later. Uh, so odd becomes parity. There you go. And I guess I'm lucky that both odd and even start with a vowel, so I don't have to deal with the er versus un thing. All right, so we have batteries, battery holders, ports, port plates, indicators, lit indicators, unlit indicators. Um, and I suppose you could also have there is an odd number of letters in the serial number, which incidentally is the same as digits in the serial number. Because if we if you have two letters, then you have four digits. If you have four letters, you have two digits. It's always even. And if you have three letters, you also have three digits. It's always odd. So I'm gonna have just letters and not digits. Okay. So these are, um, so th these are usable fallbacks. And now, if this is the first of the eight digits, fallback. Right, this is the last digit is odd. Yep, we have that. Then um, fallback. Fallback. If we're in the first stage, fallback. Fallback. Um, Okay, so we're going to make these into strings like that and indent. All right, now each of these we can uh, vary. So for example, this one here, it says the first or last. We can also have first or second, right? And we can have first or third. So, um, but we, we will need at least two because the default rules contain two of them. So, um, how about, yeah, I have an idea. 
I'm gonna make it first or second, and then I'm gonna make it third or fourth, and then we're late later we're going to change these into a randomized order. Okay, so that this one will say, for example, you know, third or fourth or first or fourth, whatever. Um, if this is the first digit, I fall back. Otherwise, the previous digit was a digit. It could be zero or one. The position of this digit number matches the number of, all right, um, let's call it element. So it could be ports, port plates, uh, unique ports, oh, unique ports, which actually, sorry, uh, should be called port types of distinct port types. Let's make it absolutely clear, all right. So it, it could be that, it could be lit indicators or whatever. If there are no port plates fallback, otherwise the position of this digit matches the number of ports on the port plate with the most ports on it. I, I like this rule, and it's very specific to ports on port plates, so I'm going to leave it. But I can also have another one that says if there are no indicators fallback, otherwise the position matches the number of um, lit or unlit indicators, whichever is greater. All right, um, we are in the stage stage of the module, so that will re be replaced with either first, second, or third. Uh, the current stage number matches the number of, right, this could be uh, letters or digits. If this is the first digit, then fall back, otherwise this number's first color. Ah, hmm. Yeah, so, you know, it would be nice if we could say this number's second color referred to a sharp flat key, and then, you know, have the fallback if this is the second digit. But if this is, yeah, so, you know, this is it. So let's just say digit. This number's digit color referred to a sharp flat key. We can do that even if it's Bravo because we don't need to know its value. All right, so if we are in the stage, stage. Oh, I see, no, this does need, right, because it refers to the previous stage, and we can't just say, you know, in the third stage when it's not the third stage yet. So two colors flashing referred to, All right, now instead of sharp flat key, it could also be a natural key. So, um, let's call that flavor. I don't know if that's the correct term in music, but right. So flavor can be either sharp or flat. Um, one or both uh, of the four digit numbers was less than five. Okay, so one or both can be any Boolean uh, operator or let, let's call it operator, right? So it could say one or both. It can be one but not both. It can be uh, both or neither, right? Right, another color in this four digit number refers to key one or key two. So just any two random keys. And this digit number would be a prime. Yep, this is my favorite rule. So I'm gonna keep that. I'll also remove that comma there. Now let's see if we can come up with some more rules. So, this is the, right, if this is the, do, do we have something like, this is a, no, that would be a stupid, I was going to say, if this is a flat sharp key versus this is a natural key, but that's stupid because the rule is always going to be on the same key, so that's nonsense. So, if this is the first one, the, the previous digit was that. So, I guess we could say, like, the digit before the previous, but then we would need a fallback for the first two digits. So actually, I think I'm going to keep that. I'm going I'm to leave that alone. The position of this digit and the four digit ma matches the number of element. Yeah, it's, um, that's already pretty varied because it could be any element. If there are no port plates, otherwise the position matches the number of ports on the port plate with the most ports on it. Okay, um, you could also match as you could also have something matches the number of batteries, right? So if there are no batteries, otherwise, well, let's say no battery holders, 
Um, and then let's say batteries. And the reason I do that is because we do have multiple widgets which does have empty battery holders, in which case it is possible to have a battery holder and yet zero number of batteries, in which case uh, this part of the rule would trigger. Right? But then, of course, it would always be false if there are no batteries because the position is never zero. But that's, you know, that's, that's a nice quirk. It's, it's not inconsistent. It's totally logical. It's perfectly clear. All right. So we're in the stage module. Uh, we could have we are not in the stage. Um, and the current stage number matches the number of R. Ah, The number of lateral digits in the serial, right, well, we could actually have the number of elements, right? We could have the current stage number matches the number of indicators or the number of lit indicators. Right, so I'm going to put uh, element uh, SN because when you know if it says like letters or digits in the serial number i still wanted to have the minus one in it uh so so i'm gonna have a separate thing for this and for this and the only difference is that letters and digits in the serial number is gonna have the minus one in it okay um if this is the nth digit in its fallback otherwise this number is first second third or fourth color refer to a flavor key um Yeah, let's have um, the other numbers, third, fourth, whatever color refer to a flavor key. Then it doesn't need a fallback. Uh, if we're in the first stage, otherwise two color flashing consecutively refer to that. Other, uh, yeah, so instead of consecutively, we could have something like any two or any three. Um, so I want the probability to be very close to, um, 50%. So I'm just quickly going to run an algorithm. So for, um, come on. So we have eight keys in our sequence and between zero and eight of them can be uh, sharp or flat. All right. And then I want to know what the likelihood of that is. I know how I'm going to do this. Okay, so I'm going to have a dictionary uh, which counts oh, God damn it, which counts the um, number of times that a particular number of flat keys happened. All right, and then I'm just going to run like a thousand experiments, and in each experiment I'm going to generate a sequence which is enumerable at range 0 to 12 because there are 12 semitones, um, and I'm going to turn them into a list and then shuffle that list. And then the first eight of those are going to be the, uh, you know, the, uh, the sequence. And then I'm going to count how many of those first eight are sharp and flat keys. And out of the 12 in, in, in an octave, five of them are sharp and flat keys. So I'm going to increment the key of sequence that take from the first eight. I want to count how many of them now, um, you know, the, uh, the black keys are actually, you know, 1, 3, 6, 8, and 10, but we don't really care about that. We only care that it's 5 out of 12. So I'm just going to say less than 5, and then that should do it. Right, and now I can, um, uh, for each key value pair in the dictionary, output uh, key equals value. All right. All right, so the closest to 50%, which would be 500, is 3. All right, so if there are exactly 3 sharp or flat keys, then, then it's close enough to 50-50. Uh, but this one here is also relatively close enough, so I guess 3 or 4 is fine. So, um, let's see, um, 
So I want this to be either three or four. I guess I'm gonna put three or four colors flashing not consecutively in a previous stage, refer to uh, sharp or flat keys. Ah, but then if it says natural, if it says natural, then, then, oh, okay, so if I do the reverse, then for natural keys, the closest to 50% is four or five, kind of expected, so let's say four or five colors flashing in the previous stage refer to natural. You know what, actually, I'm just going to make three uh, to five. Right, even if you get like five uh, a sharp, flat, a sharp flat, which is going to be relatively rare. Um, okay, let me take a look at the statistics again. So if this gets a three, that's five percent. That's pretty rare, but you know, it's not a big deal. And then for the uh, sharp flat keys, if we get a five here, that's eight percent, which is also okay. All right. So let's do that. Right, neither of the, any, none, whatever. Another color in this number refers to two specific keys. Okay, um, a color in the other four digit number refers to one of those. And this digit's number would be a prime number if this digit is one. How about the other, you know, the other number is a prime number, but then, but then we run the risk that they both depend on each other, because then if you have a rule set where uh, both of those occur, and one of those occurs in one number and the other one occurs in the other, then they conflict. So no, that's too, too complicated for me. I'm, I'm going to avoid that. We have 12 semitones, so we need to generate 12 rules to fill these, uh, you know, this part of the manual. 12. So we're going to uh, shuffle the uh, candidate rules and also the candidate fallbacks. All right, and then we're going to have a fallback index at zero and uh, rule index at zero. And now we're gonna have our rules. So, you know, actually we don't need the rule index because we're just gonna go uh, from zero to 12 because we definitely need 12 of them. And then the rule is going to be candidate rules i. All right, and now we need to take care of all of these Replacement, all right? Replacements. So first of all, let's decide on what first, second, third, and fourth are. So var um, digit order, we're gonna go uh, one, two, three. Well, actually, let's do first, second, third, and last. And then let's do a sh shuffle on that. All right. Okay. Now I need to find all of those curly brackets in in the naming of that rule. All right. So um, for um, variables, I guess I can call that equals. All right. Let's let's do some playing here. So ooh. Oh, okay. That's that's understandable because I hadn't defined it at the time. All right, so I want something like, you know, uh, foo, uh, c, d, e, bar, right. And I want to be able to find all of the, you know, curly bracket things. I'm gonna go dot test, test. Oh, that's just true. Okay, so I probably need exec. Okay, and that finds only one of them because this needs to be non-greedy. That still finds only one of them, probably because I need to put G for for global. No, it still finds only one of them. All right, that that is really embarrassing JavaScript. Okay, so um, JavaScript find all matches of a regex. Let's see what happens. To retrieve all matches. Okay, it uses a, a loop. 
That is really annoying. Yeah, that, that is seriously annoying. Um, JavaScript uh, string replace with function call. Um, string replace. Let's see if I can pass a method to that. Uh, ah, function, bingo. Function, re a function to be invoked to create the new substring to be used to replace the matches to the given regular expression or substring. Okay, so this is what I'm going to do. So I'm going to say, um, take this string and replace every occurrence of this with a function. Right, so let's see what happens if I just do this. It just replaces it straight back. All right, so if I put this in parentheses and then I say x1, ah, oh, it's just the first, oh, I see, I bet that if I do this, it will show the the con hello the contents of yeah there we go all right so this is what I am going to do Whew, okay so um replace All right, so let's see. So this is the actual variable name. So let's call it that. And this one we don't need. So um, if it's first, then we're just gonna return the uh, digit order zero, right? Second, third, fourth, second, third, fourth. There we go. All right, then we have, all right, fallback. I'm gonna have to take care of that later, but I'm gonna do that last. Uh, digit. Um, so this is gonna be either zero or one. So um, return rnd.next02. All right, position of the element, ah, element. Case, element. Okay. So uh, var candidate elements equals, so what elements can we think of? We have batteries, right? We have battery holders, then we have indicators, then we have lit indicators, unlit indicators, then we have ports, uh, port types, or rather distinct port types, and then port plates. Um, what else? Um, oh yeah, digits in the serial number and letters in the serial number. Yeah, I, I think that's, that's it. If you can think of any more, feel free to post them in the chat. Uh, let's see what Mage Hunter has to say. With the example of the bug you talked about, BD and under it 1, and you said it thought Oh, no, 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 it's not that I thought it was zero, it's just that um, the way that I wrote it, it just initializes the array to actual actual zeros, all right? So when it looks at the array, it will find an actual zero even when the value hasn't been assigned yet, all right? Does that make sense? Okay, um, so candidate elements, so we want to shuffle this, so I'm going to shuffle Fisher Yates that. And as I write this, it occurs to me that I can actually put this here as well. And then I need a candidate element ix. So let's put that here. Okay. So if there is an element, then we want to um, uh, return candidate elements element ix plus plus. So what this will do is it will get me the candidate element at the top of the list and then increment element ix afterwards. All right. Um, so that's a single return statement, so that doesn't need a break. Um, let's see, that was element. Then we have um, stage. 
stage is always first, second, or third. Okay. Stage return first, second, third. Um, rnd.next zero three. Choose one at random. So that was stage. Then we have element sn. All right. So how do we do this for element sn? Um, I have an idea. I'm going to make these arrays. And I'm going to say minus 1 here, like that. Right? And then um, and then I'm going to put a uh, function here, function get element. Um, and it's going to be um, of our element equals candidate elements element index, which we're going to return afterwards. Then we're also going to increment this. But now, if, oh yeah, so we have uh, sn, which is a Boolean, it's either sn or not sn. So um, if uh, array dot is array, that's what it's called, right? Yeah. So if array dot is array of element, then we want uh, one or zero depending on s n. Otherwise, just the element. Okay. And now we can say return get element uh, false, and then get element true. That was that. Um, element as n, that's what we were, digit, digit, flavor. Um, case flavor, return, sharp, flat, natural, rnd.next, zero, two. Okay, um, three to five. Remember that the uh, upper bound here is uh, exclusive, so we're putting 6 instead of 5, and that'll give us a number from 3 to 5. Uh, operator, right, uh, case operator return. So um, it could be neither, it could be 1 or both, could be 1 but not both, comma, yeah, um, both. I think that's it. Yeah. And then rnd.next, uh, 0, 2, 3, 4. So that was operator, and then we have key 1 and key 2. Um, I'm going to do the key 1, key 2 thing similarly to how I did the digit order. So I'm just going to have, um, yeah, rnd.shuffle, Fisher, Yates. And then I'm going to have all of the numbers up to 11. Except, no, I want the actual names of the keys, don't I? Which I have here in the source code. So I'm going to use that. Let's split that at the comma. Hmm, I'm a bit surprised that this doesn't contain the, um, you know, the, the flat things. So I'm going to, uh, first of all, these are hashtags instead of actual sharp. So I'm going to change that first. And then this can be D flat. This can be E flat. This can be G flat. This can be A flat. And this can be B flat. All right. So that's key one and key two, right? So case key one, return key zero, and for key two is keys one. Okay, now let's do the fallback, which actually at this point is totally uh, easy because, oh, I see, it could contain parity. In fact, all of them contain parity. So, um, all right, so we want, first of all, we want to get the fallback, which is 
um, candidate fallbacks of fallback index and increment that. And then we want to replace, um, what is it called, parity with um, rnd.next02, uh, then even else odd. Semicolon. Right. Right, in all other cases, return invalid, but that should never happen. So now we have 12 rules, and now we want to in insert those into the HTML. So I'm going to replace uh, all the td tags here with uh, td class rule. Um, like that. Oh. What is this? Oh, and this appears to be a uh, mistake. So I'm just going to remove that and pretend that never happened. Let me just make sure that the same problem isn't also elsewhere. No, it isn't. Surprised that that didn't uh, make any, it didn't have any effect on the um, output in the browser. All right, so. Um, var oops uh, td tds equals document dot get elements el, get elements by class name rule right and then we want tds i dot inner text all right uh, let's see what happens if I run this okay. If there are no battery holders, there is an even number of port plates. Otherwise, the position of this digit in this four digit number matches the number of batteries, whichever is greater. Wait, the position of this... Whichever... The number of batteries. Full stop. There you go. <laughs> if we're in the first stage, there is an even number of unlit indicators. Otherwise, two colors flashing consecutively in the previous... Okay, this seems to be working. There are no port plates. There is an odd number of distinct port types. Otherwise, the position of this digit, the position of this digit of port matches the number of ports on the port with the most ports on it. If there's the first of the idea, there's an even number, and otherwise the previous digit was one instead of zero. Um, the current stage number matches the number of letters in this here number minus one. Here we have the minus one. Very good. Uh, we are not in the third stage of the module. Usually the rule for f is we are in the third stage of the module. Uh, this digit's number would be a prime number if this digit is 1. So that's the usual Bravo rule. We're in the first stage of the module. So that's the opposite of this, but with first instead of third. The other numbers, 0. Ooh. Uh, the other numbers, digit, 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 digit. Right. Ah, OK. Yeah, so that needs to be an ordinal. So it's actually, uh, because it's talking about a digit in one of the four digit numbers, so we want uh, either first, second, third, or fourth, right? The other numbers first color refer to a sharp flat key. Um, a color in the other four digit number refers to that. Another color in the four digit refers to that. Oh, interesting that these are the same. Okay, actually, that's understandable because I have key one and key two both times. So I just make it key three and key four. And that way they are different. There you go. So now that's G sharp, A flat, or D. If there are no indicators, there's an odd number of battery holders. Otherwise, the position of this digit matches the number of liter and liter, whichever is greater. All right. Right, and now of course I could change you know, the rule seed and keep getting different rules. Sometimes you know, I'm, I might need to worry about the rules not fitting on the first page, but then again, you know, who prints, who prints the rule seeder versions? So probably it doesn't need that much care. Yeah, as you can see, it doesn't fit on that page very well. But I don't know, I'm tempted to... I'm tempted to put table one 
onto the first page and just have the other sorry table two on the first page and have table one on a single page so that it doesn't break up you know i i had that idea before i had that um that i i i've been wanting to do that in the past and i never did it because it really wasn't a big issue but now it is you know not really that big an issue but i guess um Well, you know what? I I'll, I I don't care. I'm going to leave it like this. If you're going to print the rule C2 and it doesn't fit on the page, then, you know, you can always modify the HTML yourself and move, you know, one of those table rows to the next page. Um Yeah, I I don't think anyone is going to print it, so I I'm just going to ignore this issue. All right. So that's the manual already done. Now there is one other thing I could do, which is I could shuffle these up, but I don't think I want to because they're nice in order. But what I could do is I could move these four things here to the front. So I could say that 0, 1, 2, and 3 are those, first key in this number, second key in this number, etc. And then starting from number 4, it starts enumerating C, C sharp, D, D sharp, etc. Um, <laughs> No, you're not. Um, how much ink do I need? Uh, you need, well, you need to print 2.1 times 2, so 4.2 billion pages to print all of the rule seeds. So good luck with that. So I guess I wanted to make it so that the, um, lol, so that the uh, first stage rules um, match the original. So let's, let's go back here and let's go to the uh, original things, which is this, All right? And then here. So I would need to make it so that the um, the place that currently has the uh, this the position of this digit in a four-digit number, the position of this this one uh, goes to uh where all right it should be this is the first or last digit so um ah, that's this one so that should be in fourth place bingo so now this is the first or last wait a second i've refreshed the wrong page right so now it says the second or last so i need to change it so that the um digit order is gonna be like this and now it says first or last. And now, if we are in the first stage, uh, that's um, one of these. Um, otherwise, both of the four digit numbers in the previous stage was, oops, was, that should say were. Um, right, okay, so, oof, this is, this is gonna be difficult. So, um, all right, I'm going to do this. So, uh, was, were, I'm going to do it as follows. I'm going to tentatively, uh, wait a second, is that the only one that has operator? Yes, that's the only one that has operator. So we can actually just decide on the operator straight away. Um, Right, so that's just one of these, and then var uh, was were, you know. Actually, wait. Um, I can just put that here, because now we have this number operator and can use the same number here. And then neither is were one or both was one, but not both was and both were. There you go, and now it should be consistent. There you go, one but not both, invalid. Um, oh, was, were, with a hyphen. There you go, was. One but not both of the four digit numbers in the previous stage was less than five. That is correct. All right, but now, um, here, I need to put the um, this one. So let's swap those two. And now it says this is the second or third, which is what it should say. Okay. 
So now that we've finally done this, and we have you know different rule sets, uh, different rule sets for different rule seeds, we are going to implement this in the actual module, which is this one here. So let's take a look at how we're going to do this. We have Simon Sings here, and I'm just going to take a quick look through this code to find out. Um, how I implemented the rules last time, as in the non-rule seeded rules. So this is how we did the uh, rules uh, in the past, before we did rule seed support. So each of these is a little condition that says whether or not to add a 0-bit or a 1-bit to your number. As you may recall, the uh, rules of Simon Sings are that you have to construct an eight-digit binary number consisting of zeros and ones, and the manual has these sort of Boolean conditions. Uh, if that condition is true, you add a one, otherwise a zero. So in the, in the case of the first one, if this is the first or last digit in this four-digit binary number, right, because the um, four-digit binary number, so we have two of those numbers, right, so we have four digits and then another four digits, all right? So the first or last digit will be uh, this one, this one, this one, or this one. Now, if we were to number these, uh, start counting from zero, then the ones we want are zero, three, four, and seven. And that's what it says here, zero, three, four, and seven, all right? So that's how this works. And the others are all very similar. So uh, percent four here obviously means modulo four. So if it's four, five, six, or seven, we want to turn that to zero, one, two, three, and that gives us the position of the digit within its four-digit number, etc. So let's let's leave it like this for now. Um, in the HTML code uh, for Simon Sings, we have so we wrote this this code uh, last time where we have these rules here, which we uh, shuffle up and then we choose at random, you know, we construct the rules using these different criteria. First thing I'm going to do, uh, let's see. We want to change this switch statement in such a way that it will uh, enforce the new rules once we've generated them. But there is one complication. There is the rule for Delta and the rule for Bravo. You will notice here that the rule for Bravo just adds a false for now. And then once it's done, it will go through the, uh, the list of um, flashing colors again. And if any of them is 11, which means Bravo, then it will enumerate it here. And the reason it does this is because it first needs to know the rest of the four digit number that this is in, right? So in our example here, let's take this. If you have zero, and then let's say this one here is the Bravo, so you don't know that yet, and then you have like one, one, and only once you have all of them, you can eval evaluate whether that would make it a prime number. And in this case, it would, because there's a seven, so that would be a one, right? But if this were a zero, for example, then that would make it a six, which is not a prime number, so that would be a zero, all right? So that's why the Bravo is delayed. And we're gonna have to keep doing, we've, we're gonna have to keep this mechanic because, because the Bravo rule, the prime number rule is still in there. So we're going to have two kinds of rules. We're going to have the uh, delayed rules, which is only this one rule. That's the only one that needs to be delayed. Um, and we're going to have the, uh, um, uh, the rest of the rules, which are evaluated immediately. Now, um, maybe I should clarify that the reason I need to, uh, Oh yes, that's right. Another thing is that here you may notice that I prevent a delta from appearing right after a bravo because this would con uh, create a conflict. The, the, the reason here being that let's say this is a zero, this is a bravo so we don't know it, and then this is a delta. The rule for delta is the previous digit was zero, which at this point we don't know yet, right? But if, if it were to, oops, if it were to follow the, um, the value that's in the array, which at this point is a sort of temporary false, it would assume that this digit is zero and therefore make this a one, right? And then let's say hypothetically this is also a one, then uh, a one here would make this a prime, so it would then change this to one and then the answer for delta would be wrong. 
Right, so this is why it prevents a delta from occurring right after a bravo. And we're going to have to uh, maintain this as well. We're going to have to make sure that the equivalent rule for delta, which is the one that says um, uh, the previous uh, the previous digit, this one here, we're going to have to make sure that this one never occurs after this one, which is the prime number rule. All right. So let's um, let's get started. So first of all, let's copy these rules into the C# -sharp code. So generate puzzle. Let's see where this is called. It was called only once inside start. Okay. So it does not actually reset the puzzle when you get a strike, right? It will um, it will throw you back to the first stage, I think. No, actually, it doesn't even do that now because it, it allows you to go back to the first stage by long pressing on the middle button. So you can always go back to the first stage if you need to, but it will, you know, still have the same puzzle on it. So it generates the puzzle only once, which means that we'll just generate the rules along with the puzzle. So uh, generate the uh, rule seeder rules first. All right, so here we have our list. Um, you know, actually, let's just uncomment that. That. All right, so we're going to have a private static. Now, actually, first of all, we're going to have a class which contains the information for a rule, right? And each rule has a name, which would be, you know, any of these things, like we're in the blah, whatever. And of course, with things like stage, etc., replaced with the proper number. Um, then we have the actual evaluation. So we need a function that takes something and returns a bool. The, the something that it takes is the stuff that we already know about the previous uh, uh, values. So for example, you know, if we're here, and let, let's say this is not a Bravo, right? If we're now evaluating the delta, we need to know what the previous digit was in order to evaluate this. So I think this is currently, OK, let me see what type I use, whether it's a list or a, yo, of course it's a list because we're adding to it. So yes, it's a list of bool. Um, uh, evaluate. Right, and now we need the, uh, the, uh, the, the two things. So first of all, we need to check whether it uh, can come after prime number rule uh, or uh, forbidden forbidden after prime number rule. So it's uh, false by default, but then we can set it to true for the one rule that requires it. And the other one is forbidden uh, before um, before prev digit rule, right? The rule that deals with the previous digit. Okay, so that's our um, class declaration. And now for each of these strings, we're going to have to, um, right, not for these, because these are things that get uh, inserted into the uh, inserted into the the strings. So let's deal with that afterwards. These are the candidate rules, All right? So these are the things that we need to convert to that class. So uh, R and D, right? We also need the R and D. So uh, let's actually start with that. We're going to need to add a rule seedable component here, like that which of course, yeah, of course I can't add this here now because, you know, it doesn't compile, but that's okay, we're gonna do it later. So var rnd equals um, rule seedable get rng. And now we have a random number generator. And then we're going to use that to shuffle a list of, Right, here we go. Okay, now we need to translate each of these to an instance of the uh, rule info class. And each of these has, right, okay, these are the, the fallbacks. We don't want to do that yet. We want to do this one. There we go. Okay, so at the moment, this is a string array, but um, we're going to change this to rules. So we are in the stage stage of the module. Now let me remind myself how exactly I replaced the stage thing with a random number. You may recall that some of them, such as for example, digit order and keys, I shuffled these before the for loop, which means that they are decided upon once. 
uh, then I have this one here, which I uh, decide upon for every rule, for each of the 12 rules. And then there are some such as this one here, which are decided only when the curly bracket thing is actually in there. All right, so we are going to need, um, you know what, these aren't actually rules, these are rule generators. So I'm going to create an array of functions that will take um, all of the information that we already have, like the digit order and the keys and stuff, and, uh, and, and then interpolate that into the string. And then, so I'm gonna the rule generator info, I guess. And then we're gonna return a rule info from this. Now this rule generator info, you know, it just occurred to me, I don't actually need to, um, because I, what I could do is I could declare the variables here. So, for example, digit order, which is going to be an array of, no, it's going to be an array of integers, all right? So we're just going to do that here, uh, call that null, and then we can literally just use that variable. So we don't even need to pass anything in. But we do need to pass in this thing here, because this is d decided separately for each uh, iteration of the loop. So um, I'm just going to call that digit, which is an int, obviously, because it's just, three, two, one, or four. All right, so that should, that should work. All right, so from that end, we generate a rule info. So in the case of this one here, oh yeah, apart from digit order, we also need keys. So, um, and this is going to be, yeah, I'm gonna make that an int array as well. Um, and, and then it'll translate the keys to the names of the keys later. All right, so for this one here, we want a digit, a new rule info. The name is equal to this, and now stage is going to be formatted into here. So we need stage, 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 um, stage, stage. Right, okay, so that is something that is decided right here. So here, we're just going to say, uh, rnd dot next zero three, and then you know first third or second. Um, we need that number twice, so I am actually going to do this var oops stage equals this. All right. Okay, so we're going to decide the number and then generate a rule info object that has return that. And that has the name, which of course, instead of just stage, is going to be um, uh, first, third, or second, right? So that. And then that's, that's the end of name. And then we want evaluate. Now, how do we evaluate this? Evaluate is a function that takes a list of bool, which are the previous values. So I'm just going to call that prev. Oh, we don't actually know which index we're at. All right, so evaluate actually needs quite a few more info. So it needs the previous things and needs to, uh, to know the index that we're currently at. All right, so the previous and the index, I'm just gonna call it ix for brevity. And we also need to know the current stage. Is that right? Yeah, I think we do. So I'm going to pass that in as well. So um, it's another integer. All right, so at this point, because we have two integers and I can't really give the names here, I'm going to put a comment here to explain what they are. Arguments, uh, previous uh, values, previous digit values. Um, I'm, I'm going to clarify that that's the list of bools. Then we have the... Um, uh, index, which is uh, index of the current digit, and then the uh, current stage. All right. Uh, return value. Uh, yeah. Okay. The return value is obvious. It's the digit that for, that this rule is for. Okay. So in this case, we want to check whether we are in that stage. So we want to check if st, which is the current stage, is equal to. Um, all right, now if stage, if, now stage is this value which is either 0, 1, or 2, but we need it to be actually first, third, and second. So 
Um, the first stage is, of course, zero, the third stage is two, and the second stage is one. All right, so that's our evaluation, and that's the end of the class, and then that's the end of that. There you go. All right, so uh, now we've declared the, uh, the first of these functions. All right, so it will take the, you know, the thing that the digit thing here, which granted we don't need, we, are, we actually only need that here, but you know, we have to pass it in so that it is consistent with the JavaScript code. Right, and we generate a rule info object. Now let's do the same thing with this one. This one actually does use the digit thing, so let's do that. In this case, right, we want to decide on a fallback. So we are going to need the fallback index. And the, the yeah, we, we, we're literally going to need all of this, aren't we? We're going to need the fallback index, the element index. Uh, that thing I can declare later. So let's just copy both of those. And, and also the operator, which is another one of those things that is used only once, namely here. OK. So I'm going to call it just op because C# doesn't let me call it operator. All right. Um is it hang on this is right I cannot actually decide on the operator just yet. I'm going to have to decide on the digit order the keys and the operator afterwards because this needs to get shuffled first and this one also needs to get shuffled. Right, and then afterwards I'm going to, because because I need the uh, random number generator to generate all the random numbers in the exact same order as in the JavaScript. So um, here I'm going to say op is uh, rnd next zero. What is it? Four. All right. Okay. So for this rule, we want. Um, so we have the so we don't actually need another variable. So I'm just going to do this rule info name equals this string dot format and zero is the digit uh, fallback. Oh yeah, I need a fallback. Uh, how do I best? Oh yeah, that's right. I can just um, fallback fallback. Okay, so this will also have to be a um, you know, a, a rule info thing, or maybe a maybe I'll have a separate rule. Yeah, I'll have a separate one. I'll call it uh, private class uh, fallback info, and that one will have a name. And the, all of the fallback rules use edge work, so I'm going to pass in the bomb info and uh, a bool and return a bool. Evaluate. All right. Okay, so the fallback, um, right, so I am actually going to need the fallback. So let's do this and return the uh, candidate fallback at the current index and increment the index. There we go. And then return this. So now we want, for that fallback, we want the name. Right, and the reason it doesn't let me do this right now is because candidate fallbacks is a string array, but obviously this is going to have to be a fallback info array later. It's strings at the moment, so it'll complain because it can't, you know, convert the strings, but that's okay. Um, so now I, I can do dot name, there we go. And then finally, we also need this flavor thing, which is going to be number two. Now flavor, uh, if I go back here, uh, how is flavor decided? Okay, that's also decided uh, here. So I'm going to say um, var uh, flavor equals rnd next zero two. All right, and then the the name of the flavor is either sharp flat or natural. So let's just do that. Uh, and then do that. And that's the end of the uh, string format thing. All right. And then the next thing we need is the evaluate function, which, as before, takes three parameters, prev, index, and stage. And we want to check if this is the, 
Right, so if this is indeed the, that digit, then we need to evaluate the fallback, right? So if index is equal to digit, then fallback.evaluate. And now it occurs to me that I don't have the KMBOM info to, uh, uh, to pass in here. But actually, that doesn't matter because we're going to use Lambda expressions here and we can just use the KMBOM info from the uh, thing. So in fallback info, we can literally just make it a function that just returns a bool. All right. So that's a function that returns a bool. Else, now, otherwise, this number's nth color which is, of course, the digit thing. So, oh, we, now we need the list of the colors. All right. So prev is the results of the previous evaluations rather than the actual colors. So I'm going to put another parameter here and call it colors. There you go. And, and that will need uh, declaring here. And the colors are, of course, a list of integers. Right, so the first argument, which is a list of integers, is the, um, you know, I, I, I kept saying colors, but it's not actually the color that we care about, but rather what key the color refers to. You know, um, uh, keys whose colors flashed. Right, and then this is number two, this is number three, and this is number four. Now let me make sure that this is indeed a list of integers. Um, Let's see, bingo, flashing colors. All right, it's an int array. So I'm, I'm just going to change that to int array. Um, so instead of list int, there's going to be int array. There you go. OK, so now we can ask if the color at this digit index is either a shop or flat or a natural key. All right, so um, still thinking. <laughs> OK, so first of all, let's check if it's a shop or flat key. So we have the uh, black keys thing, which, which is literally just the numbers 1, 3, 6, 8, 10, because that's what they are. Those are the black keys. Um, check if it contains that. And if it does contain it, then we need to check whether uh, flavor was zero. Otherwise, check if flavor equals one. All right. So that means that if flavor is zero, then we're looking for sharp flat, which means it's contained in black is yes. I think, I, I think this is correct. All right, so that's the end of the evaluate. So that's the end of the uh, entire class declaration. Um, and then we do a semicolon, and then that's the end of the entire lambda, and then a comma. All right. Now this this became pretty hard to read because it's a very long line of code. So I'm actually going to make a quick change here. Let me just quickly ch check if I have. No, I don't. All right. So I want to declare a tiny little uh, function which returns me an array. Uh, oops. I do need to put that t there, and then just read. Oops array and then just return that array because now I can uh, I can do this and of course I will do that with the others as well but what I can do now is I can use Visual Studio's auto formatting so if I do this and then this everything is just much more reasonable or readable okay so uh, put a new line here, put a new line here, new line here, and bang. OK, see, now everything fits on the screen. OK, the next rule is if this is the first of the eight digits. So let's see what we need to do here. We need another fallback, and we need to decide on the zero or one. So var fallback is candidate fallbacks, fallback uh, index plus plus, and uh, zero or one. Let's see where that's decided. Okay, that's this var zero or one. 
is equal to that. Um, that, that should work. And then we return our rule info thing, which has a name, which is string format of this. All right, and then the fallback obviously gets the fallback name. And then the 0 or 1 uh, is literally just that, because it's literally the number 0 or 1. And then to evaluate this function, again, we need to copy. You know, I think I'm just going to copy and paste this part into my clipboard, because I'm going to need that a lot. So if this is the first of the eight, of the eight digits, the first of the very, OK, so index 0, then fallback.evaluate. Else, uh, the previous digit, which would be prev uh, index minus 1, was that except that this prev thing is a list of booleans. So I think I'm going to make this a boolean as well, uh, not equal to zero, there you go. Right, so if that's equal, the pre yeah, right, that should be it. That was easy. Uh, then we have the next one, which is uh, this one. This one again requires a fallback, candidate fallbacks, fallback index plus plus, and it requires, oh, it re doesn't require anything else. So this would be the fallback, so return new rule info, uh, name equals that with the fallback name in it, and then evaluate, I can do this. So I want to evaluate and also like that. Um, if there are no indicators, so if bomb dot uh, indicator count uh, in the get get indicators dot count uh, equals zero, then uh, fallback obviously. Otherwise, the position of this digit in its four-digit number that would be index modulo four matches the number of lit or unlit indicators, whichever is greater. So we want the maximum of uh, get on indicators count or get off indicators count. All right, so that's how you evaluate that. And a comma. Next rule, the position of this digit matches the number of port plates. So digit. Uh, so this time we don't need a fallback, we don't need any variable. So we also don't need the curly brackets. We can just say a new rule info, uh, name equals that, and evaluate, which uh, we use the clipboard. Um, the position of this digit, which is ix% 4, um, matches the number of port plates. So get port plate count, bingo. There we go. Next one. If we are in, okay, so again, we need a uh, fallback. So I'm just going to copy that. Um, return new rule info, name equals string dot format this uh, with the fallback dot name. All right, so this is number zero. Then we want three to five. Okay, so var um, num, I'll just call it num, oops, uh, wrong window. Uh, 3 to 5 is literally this, right? If I use the clipboard now, you know what? I have an idea. Right, I'm going to use the clipboard for this. And now I'm going to use this uh, new feature that exists in Windows. Huh, it doesn't seem to... Okay, there is, there, there is a new feature in Windows that allows you to um, see what you've put in your clipboard previously, but right now it's not working. I thought it was WinV or WinC. All right, but it's not a big deal. I'll investigate that later. All right, so that goes here. That's the num. And then we also need the flavor. So uh, flavor we had here, so I'm just going to copy that. All right, and then... Where did we have this before? We're going to copy this part. So that's the name of the flavor. 
Now, if we are in the first stage, so if stage equals zero, then fall back. Else, um, how many colors flashing in the previous stage? We do not have the digits from the previous stage, so we're gonna have to add that here. Okay, so I need to save, first of all. I'm going to replace all occurrences of that with something that has an extra parameter. There we go. And then here, I'm going to need another list of bool. Uh, so the previous digit value is in uh, this stage. And then uh, this list of bool is the, previous, is the digit values in the previous stage. And then we have four and five. Okay, so now it's complaining. <laughs> it's complaining because the func type doesn't take that many arguments. <sighs> All right, let me just quickly take this uh, declaration here and then declare my own version of this. So we have a delegate called func which takes uh, a fifth argument. There we go. And then that should work. Now, where was I? I got a little distracted. Okay, so here I need to use the values from the previous stage. So I need to count how many of them refer to, you know, flavor keys. So previous stage count. Oh. The <laughs> okay, what I need is the colors from the previous stage not the digits. So I actually need a list of int and then uh, these are the uh, keys whose colors flashed in the previous stage. Now I bet because this is an int array this is also going to be an int array so I'm just going to change that and now that I think about it I'm also going to change the order so that those two are right next to each other. So let's put that here, change the two, change the three. And now that we have that many arguments, I think I'm going to put them in a separate list like this. Okay, one after the other. Okay. So keys whose colors flash in the previous stage. Now I know that for some, for one of the other rules, we will also need the values uh, of th that that existed in the previous stage. So let me just quickly add that. Uh, let me look through the rules. What refers to the previous stage? So here we have the colors flashing in the previous stage. Here we have the uh, four-digit numbers in the previous stage, and then we this again is the colors. So we're okay here. So we only need the evaluated value of the four-digit numbers. All right. So I'm just going to make that another int array. All right, so third int array uh, values of the four digit numbers in the previous stage. And then this becomes four, five, six. And then of course we need to add that here. All right, Whew, now we have a func with six arguments. All right. We're going to replace all of this. So we have the colors, then we have the colors from the previous stage, then we have the previous digits in this stage. Um, uh, no, we have the values from the previous stage first. So let's call it uh, vowels from the previous stage. And then instead of prev, I guess I should really call it cur digits, the digits in the current stage, or rather uh, digits cur. Right, and this, what was prev st? That was the, um, ah, that, that was the keys from the previous stage. So that has changed. And then we have the index of the current digit and the current stage number. Okay, so let's replace all of that. All right, so these have all been changed now. And this is no longer called prev, it's called vals prev. All right. Wow, so many, I, I had no idea that we needed that many values, but that's fine. Okay, so here we want, uh, 
if we're in the first stage, then fall back. Otherwise, how many colors flashing in the previous stage? So we want the colors from the previous stage and count how many of these colors refer to. Right, okay, so. Um, black keys contains C. If so, we counted if flavor is equal to one else, we counted if flavor is equal to. No, this one is one because zero, as indicated by this array here, zero means sharp or flat. Right, so if it is contained in black keys, then we want to count as a yes if we're looking for sharp and flat keys. All right, so that gives us the count and um, right, and this is the num, right? So we want to um, see now. I'm not sure if it should probably say exactly, exactly. Right, rather than because otherwise it's not clear whether it's exactly or less than or equal to. So, um, right here, exactly. Good thing I noticed that. Okay, so that's the end of that evaluation. So, if that is e equal to num, then the rule, yep, okay, that should be fine. Next one, digits. return new rule info, name equals that, uh, evaluate, right, okay, I don't have that in my clipboard anymore, so I'm going to put that here. Okay, we need a fallback again, so we're going to put that fallback here, fallback name, and that's all we need. So let's just evaluate that. So if there are no port plates, so if uh, port plate count equals zero, then it's the fallback. Else, uh, the position of this digit, which is ix uh, percent four, in its four-digit number matches the number of ports. Right. So let's get all of the port plates, um, and for each port plate, find the maximum length, which is the number of ports on that. Okay. And then semicolon. Okay, next one. The current stage number matches the number of element. All right, so now we need an element, which is basically the same as fallback, but we now have ca candidate elements, or is it elements? Uh, what did I call this? Oh, I see it. It's down here. Okay, fine. Candidate elements needs to be an array of uh, yeah element info. So I'm, I'm just gonna create yet another one. So we have rule info. We have fallback info. Um, uh, we're gonna have an element info. And the only difference between that and the fallback is that it gives us an integer rather than a uh, a boolean. All right, so, oh yeah, and also this, right, we're going to assign it here because we do need the shuffle Fisher Yates to happen after this one, but I need to declare the variable earlier. So I'm going to just move the declaration to here and say this is an element info array, set it to null for now, and then here just remove the var and then just turn that into an array, and we'll turn these into element infos later. Hmm, why isn't it complaining? Oh, it's because of the comma, and now it'll complain, right? Yep, there you go, now it complains, that's good. That's what it should do. All right, so now we want candidate elements, element index plus plus, so now we have an element, and then we put that here, element dot name, return new rule info, name equals string dot format that. And now I need to copy this again. Okay, so the current stage number, which is st, which is actually st plus one, matches uh, the, um, yeah, what we get from the element. All right, return that. So far, so good. 
Next one, if there are no battery holders, fall back. Otherwise, the position of this digit matches the number of batteries. That's pretty much the same as this, right? Except that we don't have an element where we have a fallback, so it's actually pretty much the same as this. So let's just copy and paste this, All right? So this is the new name. And of course, fallback. So if there are no battery holders, so battery holder count equals zero, then fall back. Else, the position of this digit, that's this, matches the number of batteries. So that's just a battery count. There you go. That should do it. Right, now we have this rule. So this says um, this is the first or second, or maybe first or third, or whatever. So we're going to put the, the this is where we need the digit order thing, right? But uh, we don't need that yet. So return new rule info name equals string dot format that, and then evaluate. Yep, let's just copy that. I'm just gonna put some dummy value there now. Okay, so the first or second, so let's find out how this does it. It's digit order zero, that's what I thought. Except that this time, digit order is an int array rather than uh, you know the string array that it is here. So I still need to use that to index into it. So we want digit order zero and digit order one. Okay, now how do we evaluate this? Well, um, the digit in its for that's index uh, modulo four. So if that is equal to digit order digit order digit order zero or digit order one, and that should be it. So we didn't need any extra variables, so we can just do that. There you go. Okay, next one. Another color in this four digit number refers to key one or key two. I, it just occurred to me that this rule doesn't actually make sure that it refers to a different key than the one this rule is for. I don't know if I should do, should, um, let, me, let me see if that's easy to do. So the another key one or key two. So key one is key, oh yeah, that's not going to be easy to do because I do the shuffling before the for loop. So I'm I'm going to ignore this, but I'm going to you know evaluate the rule literally. It says another color. So if it is uh, if one if either key one or key two is in fact the the key that this rule is for, then it it'll be false. All right. So, another color in this four digit number. All right, so we already have the key one, key two, so we don't need extra uh, variables. So, name equals string dot, string dot format that. Now, key one is uh, keys uh, zero, right? Key one is key zero. Yeah, except that now we need to use this array. Uh, but fortunately, whoops, fortunately, we have this, all right? So I'm actually going to use this, but let me first check where what, I'm, what I use this for already. Um, okay, this is, uh, okay, this is a function. Let's see, key names, piece dot ends with, oh, I see, this is, for, this is the Twitch Play support. Yeah. Okay, so actually I'm yeah. I'm I'm going to split this up. Um so so as to not um break the Twitch place, I'm going to keep TP key names and change this one here to uh that. And then find out where key names is still used. Okay, see, this is something that's uh, in the logging. So here I can use key names uh, even if I change them. All right, now if you're wondering in what way do I want to change them, well, two things. First of all, um, 
you know, instead of a hashtag, I actually want to use the actual uh, sharp sign, which is this one here. I don't know if you can tell the difference. If I do this here, if I put them side by side, maybe you can tell the difference. But the other thing is that, as I've already done here in JavaScript, I wanted to also have the, um, the flat things. So I'm actually just going to copy this array here from the JavaScript code um, and put that right here. OK. Whew. Um, so now the logging will act. Oh, I should probably check where this is used. Yeah, see, that's entirely used only in logging. So it's, it's actually you know, not just not a big deal, but maybe even a benefit that it also contains the uh, flat things. All right, so back to the rule that we were implementing here, uh, key names, key zero, and then key names, key is one. And then this is zero, this is one. And then we need to evaluate. So another color in this four digit number so we actually <laughs> we actually need the colors which are these but it says in this four digit number not in the whole eight digit thing so i need to find out whether i'm in the first or the second so i definitely want four separate digits but if i am if i am in the second digit then the index divided by 4 will be equal to 1 and then if I multiply that by 4, then that'll be either 0 or 4. Therefore, this enumerable.range um, will evaluate either from 0 to 3 or from 4 to 7, which is what I want. OK, so any. So these are indexes. So first of all, I need, yeah, because it says another color. So I need to make sure that i is not equal to uh, ix percent 4 and well wait, wait actually i yeah actually it's, it's just it, it, i is the actual index right so um colors uh equals keys 0 or colors i equals keys 1 all right Right, let me make sure that this is correct. So we go from this, which is either 0 or 4. We go four, four values from there. And then for each of these, check that it's not the index we're currently at. And that color is one of the two. If any of them is, then it's true. All right, yep, and that should be correct. This digit's number would be a prime. Oh, this is the prime number rule. OK, so this is the one that needs to be evaluated afterwards. Right. So here we finally have an example of something where right, uh, we have to set this. Uh, ah, right. This is what I called them. Um, you know, maybe. Maybe I should just call it uh, is prime number rule and uh, uses previous digit because then it's clearer what these booleans mean right if it uses the previous digit then we just set that to true okay in fact that previous digit thing isn't that something we've already done um there we go the previous digit was that so um, let's set that to true. Now, why is this broken? Uh, operator can be applied int, right? This should be, um, okay. Uh, otherwise the previous digit. Okay. So this is actually a digits curve that we want. Yes. All right. OK, now this is the prime number rule. And this doesn't require string.format because there are no curly brackets in it. Uh, but we still need to evaluate it, which we do by checking that this digit's number would be a prime number 
if this digit is one. So we're still going to do this, this innumerable range here. So we get all of the numbers. We start with zero and then uh, for each new digit, we take the uh, previous uh, shift left one and then or it with the next. But the next, oh yeah, it is an integer. Um, Right, right, right. No, we don't want the integer. We want um, the uh, digits cur. Uh, next. Except at, except at the one place where, you know, where the digit... Yeah, oh wow, this is, this is really hard. I'm going to make this a uh, function. So, um, okay, so we have our values that are either 0, 1, 2, 3, or 4, 5, 6, 7, all right? And now for each of these, uh, for each of these indexes, if that is the index we're currently looking at, then I'm going to put a true there because, you know, I want to check if it is a prime number, if it is a 1. Right. Otherwise, we want the uh, current digits at that index. All right. And then we calculate the value from that. So that's this now. Except that's now a boolean. So instead of true, yeah, no, I'm I'm just gonna do this. If it's true, then one else zero. There we go. So that gives us the number. And now I need to check whether that number is a prime. All right, so I probably have, there we go, primes that contains that. There you go. All right, and now I don't need the separate function. There you go. Okay, nice and readable. <laughs> all right, let's take a look at the list of primes. Yep, those are all the primes that we need. That's good. If it contains this value, if it contains this value, it'll return true otherwise false, all right? So that's what we want. Whew. Next. All right, we want, if we are in the first fallback, so we need something with a fallback, so we're gonna uh, grab the fallback from here. Return new rule info, name equals string.format this, fallback name. Right, and then of course evaluate that. Okay, um, so fall back. Then we need an operator. Yes. Okay, operator. Uh, we've uh, we've got the variable here, right? But that variable is just going to be zero, one, two, or three, just like here. So we still need to turn that into a name, which is one of these. Right, it's uh, neither, one but not both, one or both, or both. So we want that array and then take the op element from it. And then was where, uh, was were is of course the same as this here. Uh, yeah, that's right. So I'm uh, just for readability, I'm going to do this. Okay, so that's our string format. And now we evaluate this by saying, um, if we are in the first stage, then we do the fallback, fallback.evaluate. Otherwise, um, right now we need the, the operator. So first of all, which of the four digit numbers in the previous stage uh, was or were less than five? Um, Right, okay, let's do this. If we're in the first stage, evaluate the fallback. Else, uh, find out how many of them. So we have the values, the values from the previous stage. Count how many of these are less than five. That gives us a count. And then, uh, depending on the operator, so if it's zero, then it's neither. So then we want uh, C to be zero, else. If it's one, then we want one but not both. 
Uh, so c equals one. Um, in the second case, we want one or both, so it, that's just c greater zero. And in all other cases, both, so c equals two. All right, and we can probably fit that on one line. There you go. Okay, next one. We are not in the something stage of the module. All right, um, stage is decide right okay so var stage equals give me a next value from zero to three and then of course we use that array here return a new rule info name equals string of format this and then here we put in that uh, stage Okay, and then we want the evaluate thing. So um, we want to check that the stage is not equal, because it says we're not in that stage, zero to one stage. And there's a comma missing. No. All right, digits. Why, what about we are in the something stage of the module? Did we have that? No, oh, we did have that. I, <laughs> I implemented the exact same thing twice and didn't even notice I could have just copied it. All right, we're in the first stage fallback, otherwise two colors flashing consecutively in the previous stage. Okay, so once again, we need a fallback and flavor. So we can just copy this. And then return new rule info, name equals this. Okay, so fallback and flavor. We want fallback and flavor. Now flavor is um, flavor is this. Can I go back, please? Thank you. There we go. Okay, and then we want to evaluate that, so we copy this again. Uh, let's see, comma, there you go. All right, so if we are in the first stage, then we use the fallback. Else, two colors flashing consecutively in the previous stage. So the colors in the previous stage, obviously, is this, and there will be eight of them, but there are only seven consecutive pairs. Right, so if any of those pairs, I'm just going to identify them by the index of the left one. Uh, okay, so... I'm going to... Okay, so... So if this color is... Uh, yeah. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm, so if, if flavor is equal to zero, then we're looking for shop or flat, right? So if uh, the first, if, if the i thing is in there and the i plus one thing is in there, then it's true, right? But if flavor is equal to one, then we want basically the same thing, but not black keys dot contains, right? So I'm going to uh, write it like this. Okay. Well, maybe I should write it like this so you can see how they're... Yeah, there you go. So you can see the similarity between them and you can see how the only difference is the exclamation point. Okay. Whew. Only three more to go. Digits. A color in the other four-digit number refers to key three or key four. All right, well, we had the key one thing earlier, which doesn't exist anymore, but we have keys order zero over the key order. Oh, what did I call it? Um, I probably called it digit order. No, I, no, it's keys, it's keys, right? Um, all right, keys zero. There you go, this one. All right. 
So we basically, all right, okay, return new, actually, just, just copy the whole thing. Oh, I see, it is just, oh, okay. Yeah, okay. Fine. Um, new rule info, there you go. So, the name is now this, right? Key three and key four are now keys two and three. And this evaluation here, so now instead of, so index divided by four will give me either zero or one. Zero if it's the left, the, the left four digit number or one if it's the right four digit number. So if I do one minus that, sorry, inside the brackets, then that will give me the other one. All right, and then I can check whether a color in there, and now I don't need to check whether that is the current index anymore. Um, the color in the other four digit number refers to keys two or keys three. There you go. Right, two more to go. The other number's nth color referred to a flavor key. All right, this is where we need this digit thing that we're passing, uh, that we've been passing the whole time. Okay, so first of all, let's get a flavor, which is this, obviously. Uh, return a rule info that has a name. Okay, so now, uh, digit, yeah, we need this array. Um, referred to a flavor key, which is, of course, this bit. We can just copy that from up there. All right. And then we evaluate. There you go. So the other number is, so first of all, this is where the other number starts. And then we want to add the, uh, the index, which is digit. So we want two, one, zero, three digit. And then we, we need to check whether that color referred, right, so um, if that is in fact a black key, then uh, check whether flavor equals zero, else check if flavor equals one. Okay, semicolon. One last rule to go. Okay, so this one, ah, okay, this is the, we had that rule before. Yep, that, that's exactly the same as this rule, but with the other two from the digit order. So let's just copy that. And then here we want digit order two and three, and two and three. Okay, finally, we have codified all of the rules. Now let's codify all of the fallbacks. This should be easier because the fallbacks literally have just a name and a uh, evaluate function, right? So for each of these, we can just go fallback info, name equals that, and then evaluate. Does the evaluate, see that doesn't even need a parameter, so we can just say bomb, uh, bomb info. No, it's, it's bomb, isn't it? Bomb, there is an odd number of batteries, so get battery count percent two equals one. And there you go, that's, that's our fallback info for that one. Right, so I am going to use a new array for this one so that I can use the formatter. Right, so now if I format this, that works. And of course it complains because all the other ones aren't, uh, all, all of the other ones are strings right now, but we're gonna change that. We're gonna put all of this here, and then we're gonna put this here. And, and then fix them all. Right, there is an odd number of indicators. Indicator. And that. Okay, and that's all of the fallbacks done. And now we need the elements thing, which is right here. This is gonna be even easier. Uh, new element info name equals that. 
and then evaluate. Again, it doesn't require any parameters. Bomb dot battery count. Right, then we put that everywhere. Doink. Okay. So battery holders, uh, indicators, get indicators count, uh, letters in the serial number minus one, uh, dot count, uh, unlit indicators, ports, uh, distinct port types, uh, port plates, uh, digits in the serial number, so number numbers dot count minus one, and finally lit indicators. Here we go. All right, there's a comma missing. Haha, <laughs> boink. All right, I was going to uh, point out next. Now we have a variable here called keys, but we've already declared a variable called keys here. In fact, this variable I've declared just now, whereas the other one was already there before. So I'm actually going to change this one, and I'm going to change it to key order, I guess, and then see where in the document keys is used, and start searching here. So that, here we go, keys order, and these. All right, that should be it. Okay, so now that we've done that, um, let me go back to the JavaScript code. So we've we've done. Okay, so we are here after candidate elements, and then after that we need to do the shuffling of these two before we decide the operator. All right. So digit order and key order is going to be shuffle Fisher Yates of uh, that array and that array except that we actually want these to be uh, integers, right? So I'm, so this is actually gonna be just four integers, zero to four dot uh, two array. So that gives me an int array, and then this is going to be an int array from zero to, well, 12, from zero to 11, but there are 12 elements in it. Okay, save that. Wait, tell me what font is that? Um, do you mean the font in my Visual Studio? That would be, I believe it's Work Sans. Yes, it's Work Sans. Okay, so after the op thing, we now need to do this for loop. In each for loop, decide on one of those digits, and then call the uh, uh, the rule generator. Okay. What, what, yeah. Why non-monospaced? Well, why monospaced? I have, you know, I don't really know how to explain it, but I don't understand why anyone wants to use monospaced. And the only reason I use monospaced here in Notepad++ is because Notepad++'s support for proportional fonts is uh, lacking. So, you know, if, if you can give me a reason why I should use monospaced, I'm happy to hear it, but the only reason that I've generally heard is that people sometimes want to align things vertically. So for example, you know, here, you might want to align this, and with proportional fonts, you can't do that. But if you think about it, as soon as you use a programming language like C Sharp, which does auto formatting, then that uh, becomes useless anyway, then you can't do that anyway. All right, so proportional fonts have like thousands of uh, benefits. So first of all, they're easier to read, right? Because proportional fonts are usually what you use to read. Like you, you read almost anything in proportional fonts, like newspapers and books and websites and everything. So uh, we are more attuned to proportional fonts. Plus, uh, you can fit more text in one line, right? So you can have longer lines without, um, without having to scroll off to the right. So that's another benefit. All right, so um, let's keep going. So we've decided on the digit order, key order, and operator. So next thing, uh, we need this for loop. So um, um, initialize the rules for the keys, rule seed. All right. 
Okay, so we we will need a rules array, right? So var rules equals rule info, and we want a list of that. And we want to start a new list of that. All right. Uh, we want to decide on a digit, which we are going to do just this part. So var digit equals that. Um, this is used by some of the rules. Um, and then we literally just do rules.add uh, candidate rules i dot uh, uh, open parenthesis uh, digit. There you go. So we can actually just literally just put that straight in there. And that, that should, wow, that is far shorter than I expected it. All right, so now we have the rules. And then we also need to change the code afterwards to evaluate these rules. But before I do that, I want to uh, verify whether the rules are generated correctly. Quick modding question, where's Unity's debug output? Uh, yeah, it's not supposed to be in contain.log. It's uh, here, except replace Tim Wee with your name, obviously. All right. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to uh, debug.log format, uh, Simon Sings, module ID, and then I want the rule that we just added its name. Uh, right, and I also want the key, so key names, no, not the TP key names, key names, uh, I. All right, so now if I run the module, um, I should get the list of the rules. And if, if this doesn't match what's in the manual, then I will have made a mistake, and then I will have to debug that. And that will probably take me quite a while. So let's, let's hope that it's um, correct. Right. OK, here is the module. Uh, let's just run it. Null reference exception in line 244. Ah, rule seedable. Of course, I need to add the rule seedable component. And I need to add a reference to that right here. And then we're going to press Apply, Save, and run it again. OK. White key given zero number is not contained. All right. C. This is the first or last digit in its four digit binary number, correct? This is the second or third. This is the first of the eight digits. Then the last digit of the serial number is odd. Yep. Otherwise, the previous digit was. Okay, it says false here instead of zero, but that's okay. Um. um Ah, okay, it's because I did this. Okay, in that case, then let's do that. Okay. Come on. All right, so now it says zero. Very good. Um, the position of this digit in its four-digit number matches the number of port plates, matches the number of port plates. Okay, at this point, I'm fairly convinced that this is working and this is correct. Let's quickly check the last one, which is this digit number would be a prime. Okay. Um, interesting. Why is F? This shouldn't say F. This should say A sharp. Another color in this four-digit number refers to F. Or F sharp, yeah, that is what it says here. But for some reason, it says F there. So, um, did key names get messed up somehow? Yes. <sighs> oh, right. The key names are in a different order because that is what we did here. So, we are going to have to, I mean, I want the key names to be the proper key names. So I'm going to have to put this in the right order. So, um, you know what, I'm going to put that uh, here, change the commas to new line C, C sharp, and then we have D, D sharp, E, F, F sharp, uh, G, 
G sharp, A, A sharp, right? So this is what it should be. Um, right, but then the original ones, uh, these, I'm going to have to change these to their um, uh, numbers, all right? So, okay, so this is what it should be. Let's put that here. Okay, so now I can see from the line number which index they should be except it's off by one because this is index zero. So I'm just going to remove that. And then I'm going to replace these with the indexes. So that is zero, this is one, and this is two, three, four, five, six. Also, this is 10, seven, eight, nine, 11. Okay, so this is the order in which they uh, need to be for the uh, for the rule generator. So now where we have key, key order, which is uh, decided here, instead of innumerable range 0 to 12, we are going to shuffle this array. Right, now let me see about the digit order thing. Um, you know, I just realized something, because with digit order, see, we've always used this array here, last, second, first, third. And then we have another, ooh, ooh, this is even wrong. Aha, yes, these are wrong. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm actually going to change this to the array that uh, this represents. So last would be three, second would be one, first would be zero, and third would be two. And then here, uh, I will change this to uh, the you know, correct order. That, that you would expect, first, second, third, last. Okay. Um, here as well. So now digit order actually tells me which digit they, they each are, which is what we expect here. Okay. So now, First of all, let's check that the keys are in the right order. G, G sharp, A, A sharp, B, that's correct. And the rule that we changed was um, the, the first two, right? The, the C and C sharp. Here, this is the first or last digit, and this is the second or third digit. So they are still correct. And that is awesome. OK, so now that we've generated the rules, we now need the module to enforce those rules, to evaluate those rules. Let's see how we do that. There will be three stages, right? And in each stage, we have uh, keys that flash. And we need to prevent a D from appearing right after a B, right? So what we actually want is we want to prevent a previous digit rule uh, from appearing right after a prime number rule. Uh, that's a special case that would be in conflict. Right, so dpos is equal to array of flashing two. Okay, so I've hard coded this here, but what I really need is uh, in that flashing colors array, I need to find out which one has a rule. Uh, actually, now that I think about it, probably souvenir has this. Uh, bingo, it has the ut.cs file. So let's go to um, uh, Simon Singh's assets and paste that here. And then go back to Visual Studio. Actually, let's go to Unity first because it will notice it and add it here. And then here I don't need most of these, but there is the one I want that is called index of, which is of course the very last one. I mean, not of course, but it is the very last one. All right, so I'm going to use this function to find things. All right, so var previous digit rule equals flashing colors for the stage index of. OK. Um, oh, I see, because the namespace is still souvenir, so let's change that to Simon Sings. And then here, let's add a using Simon Sings. All right. So, um, 
Flashing colors actually contains just the color integers. So what I actually want is I want to, yeah, no, I do want to find the index of a color, of a color whose uh, associated rule, so that, that's rules uh, C is a previous digit rules, right? So I want to find that and I want to find uh, the position, I want to find the position of that. The position of the prime number rule would be prime. Okay. So if uh, the previous digit rule is there and the prime number rule is there and, um, oh yeah, is there, so it's greater or equal to zero which is the same as not equal to minus one. So I'll just write that, not equal to minus one. And um, the previous digit rule can't be right after the other one. So if that is equal to the uh, prime number rule position plus one, then we have a problem. All right, so in that case, uh, so the pre so prime number rule is the uh, smaller of the two. Yes. All right. In which case we want to use right, we we want to just swap the two. So get get the one at uh, um, previous digit rule, and then set that one to the one at prime rule, and then set that one to t. All right, so we're swapping those two. So now whenever the, uh, the rules uh, appear in the order in which they would be in conflict, it will just swap the two and then they're no longer in conflict. All right, so you have the previous digit rule first and then the prime number rule. I hope that this works. Okay, and now we need to evaluate this. So instead of all of this here, we would say um, if, so first of all, what's the rule? The rule is rules um, that i, right? Now, if this rule is not the prime number rule because we need to evaluate those later, then we add, um, you know, we, we evaluate that rule. Now here we need to pass in all of these uh, parameters. So the first one, I don't remember what it was, so I'm going to copy this comment that I wrote. Um, this is, you know, this is why comments are useful and helpful. So the first one is the keys whose colors flashed. That would be flashing colors in this stage. Uh, keys whose colors flashed in the previous stage. So if stage equals zero, then there isn't any. Otherwise, flashing colors stage minus one. Uh, values of the four digit numbers in the previous stage. Um, do we have? No. Okay. So again, if the stage is zero, then that's null. Otherwise, it's going to be two numbers. So I'm going to uh, go zero to two. And then for each of those, I'm going to look at the uh, values from the previous stage, not the flashing colors. So, um, Uh, oh, first, ah, first number and second number, that's what they are. Okay, so I can literally just do this, first number, uh, stage minus one, and then second number, stage minus one. Right. Um, okay, so we've done that and that. And that. Okay, so the next one is the previous digit values in this stage, so that would be bits. And that's the list of bulls that we are uh, populating. Um, then we have the index of the current digit, that would be i, and the current stage, which is of course stage. Right, and stage goes from zero as I suspected it would. All right, so that's our evaluate function. And as you can see, it fits on one line. Okay. 
So if it is the prime number rule, however, we still need to add something. So I'm just going to add a false there because that's actually what it does here. It adds a dummy false, right? So I'm going to remove that now because we don't need that anymore. Um, And then after we've evaluated all of those, we go through them again, this time to evaluate the prime number rule. Okay, so we're just going to do the same thing again. And we're going to say if this is the prime number rule this time, then bits i is equal to um, uh, rule.evaluate. Okay, and then this gives us the bits. And then this is the same as before, where it just calculates the number from the first four bits, from the last four bits, and then finds out what keys to press. Okay, let's see if that works. Okay, we have a compile error. The type or name bit. Oh, it still says souvenir here. All right, let's. Just remove that. Built succeeded. Right, let's clear that. This should disappear. There we go, it's disappeared. And then we start the module. Okay, so we're currently on rule seed one, so we should be um, uh, on the uh, you know the familiar rules. Um, so I'm going to write down the colors that are flashing. All right, so that was a delta, that's an alpha, that's a delta sharp, that's a bravo, and that's a golf, and we have a C sharp and a C, and that's the end of the sequence, and the first one is a foxtrot, and after that is delta. All right, so now let's move that to the right and open the manual right here. And we, there we go. Let's split that. Okay, there we go. All right. Um, so Foxtrot says we're in the third stage. So that's a no. Delta says if this is the first of the eight digits, we'll just no. So the previous digit was zero. Yes, it was. Alpha. Um, if we're in the first stage, yes, there is an even number of indicators. And so now I need the edge work. Let's see. We have a, a serial number. And we have a lit CLR. We have a DVI RCA. And another one. Then we have two batteries in one holder and another port plate with lots of stuff. And uh, there you go. All right, so back to the rules. If we're in the first stage, there's an even number of indicators. That's a no, we have one indicator. Delta sharp, the position of this matches the number of port plates. Well, the position is four and the number of port plates is three, but I bet that this is uh, wrong in the code because I just realized that uh, I, I may have m made a mistake. So I, I'm quickly going to check check that position of this digit matches blah blah. So in the kind of phone, bingo. See the index here is between zero and three, but the position as the ma manual means it is of course that plus one. So I'm going to cancel the module here, change that to plus one and uh, run that again. Sorry about that. So now we're going to start again. We have a Delta, Charlie, uh, what's that? That's Golf, Alpha, uh, Foxtrot Sharp, Foxtrot, Delta Sharp, Bravo, end of sequence. And it starts with Delta, all right? And then our edge work is um, Serial number is 585 five, Alpha Whiskey 7. We have three port plates, each with a serial port, one battery and one holder, and a fourth <laughs> port plate with a serial port. That is incredible. All right. Now, Delta, if this is the first of the eight digits, yes. The last digit is odd. That's a yes. This is no. Golf, if there's a no, there is an odd no, no. This number's first color referred to it, that's a no, it was a delta. If we're in the first stage, yes, there is an even number of indicators, yes, because it's zero. F sharp, the current stage number, which is one, 
the current stage number. Oh, yeah, see here, I did not forget the plus one. Uh, the current stage matches the number of letters in the serial number minus one. That is a yes. F, we're in the third stage, no. Delta sharp, the position, which is three, matches the number of port plates, no, because we have four port plates. And now the prime number rule. Well, this with it, that would be a nine, which is not a prime number, so that's zero. Uh, I thought so. Wait, maybe that's why people leave my streams, because I don't use a mic. Oh, I see, I missed some context here. Uh, yes, it is currently 8.14 uh, by now. Uh, I live in Germany. Um, yes, I am talking. Wait, maybe that's a... <laughs> yeah, it's definitely more in, uh, interactive when, you know, you can talk to the people in the chat. So yes, if you literally just play a game and don't even say anything, then... Um, I, I don't know if that's why people leave your stream. Maybe your gameplay is uh, fantastic. But if you don't use a mic, then people don't have a reason to talk to you. And that's why they wouldn't say anything in the, in the chat. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So if, uh, you know, if, if they know that you're not going to respond, then they're not going to say hi. Right, because there's just no point. All right. So now we've calculated this. So the first number here is a 9, and the second number is an 8. Uh, and 9, which is this one here, is alpha. And 8, of course, is golf sharp. And then it says, start on the left of the zero number as a vowel. That's a yes. So we start on the left. So it's left alpha. And let's hope that this is right. OK, it didn't complain. And right golf sharp. Golf sharp. Okay, now we're in the second stage. So evaluating the rules seems to have worked. And let's see, it says here stage one solution. Yes, it does. Right, now um, I'm not going to bother reading the colors this time because I can just copy it from the log. Right, and just change the uh, commas there. Right, and let's also change uh, that. There you go. OK, so delta says if this is the first of the eight digits, yes, it is. The last digit is odd. That's a yes. This is the delayed one. Foxtrot sharp, the current stage number matches the number of letters in the serial number, which is 2 minus 1, so no. Golf sharp, we're in the first stage, no. Two f colors flashing consecutively in the previous stage refer to sharp flat keys. No, the only two are F sharp and D sharp, and they are not consecutive, so that's a no. Um, A sharp, another color refers to another color in this number, so that's yes because the F, and that's a no. D sharp, the position of this digit matches the number of port plates, that's a no. It's the same as here. And then F is when the third stage, so that's a no. Now, if I were to make this a 1, then that would be 12, so it's not a prime. So we have the same as this, which is golf sharp, golf sharp. Uh, so we start with alpha, which is this, and we golf sharp, golf sharp, golf sharp. That seems to work. All right, I'm fairly confident with this. So now I'm going to try um, a different rule seed. So let's just randomly pick rule seed number 47. Um, uh, save and run. Right, the reason I did the original vanilla things is because even though the rules didn't change, the programming did change, right? So I needed to make sure that I'm still, uh, th that it still follows the original rules. I hope that makes sense. All right, so that's why we were solving the original. So uh, now we're going to do the same thing with rule seed 47. Um, first of all, let me make sure that it actually generates the same rules as in the manual. So here it says the position of this digit in the for it matches the number of port plates, matches the number of port plates. Yes, if this is the first of the digit, there's an even number of letters, even number of letters, yes. Otherwise, the previous digit was zero. Yep, that's correct. If we are in the first stage, there is an odd number of ports. Yep. OK, I'm fairly convinced that this is correct. Actually, let's try the last one, a color in the other four-digit number. 
uh, B, a color in the other four digit number, refers to F sharp or C sharp. Yep, that is correct. I'm sorry to see you go, Camo. I hope to see you again some other time. I hope you enjoyed the stream. See you around. Bye. Um, coming back to the module. Uh, let's now look at the sequence of flashes. Well, actually, I'm just going to look at the uh, flashing sequence here. Come on. All right, so let's remove all the commas. And uh, we need the edge work, obviously. The serial number is uh, JQ1JS9, which does not have a vowel, so we start on the right. Can I also please get rid of this? Because I don't need it. Okay, and then we have, let's see, we have a lit FRQ, lit NSA, and an unlit mic SA, uh, lit. Um, then we have one battery in one holder and a port plate with uh, these three ports on it. All right, batteries to the top. And then here we go. So, Charlie. The position of this digit, which is 1, matches the number of port plates, which is 1, so that's a yes. Bravo. A color in the other four-digit number refers to F-sharp, that's a yes, or C-sharp is a no, but that's a yes. Right, golf. Uh, we are not in the second stage. Indeed, we are not in the second stage. Echo. Another color in this four-digit number refers to golf-sharp or alpha, that's a no. Delta-sharp. If we are in the first stage, which we are, there is an even number of batteries. That is no, we have one battery. Alpha. The other number's fourth color, which is echo, referred to a natural key, that's a yes. F. This is the third or first <laughs> digit, that's a yes. And then Foxtrot Sharp, we're in the first stage, yes. There's an even number of indicators, no, we have three. So I expect that the answer is the third key, which is golf and uh, foxtrot sharp. So golf and then foxtrot sharp. Uh, golf, foxtrot sharp. Right, apparently I got two strikes for that. All right. For the stage one solution, it says foxtrot sharp and then delta. Hmm. All right. So both of them were wrong. Um, let's see. So in order for this to be Foxtrot Sharp, uh, it would have to be uh, 0, 1, 1, 0. So let's, uh, so the first one is, is something to look at. And then for the second one to be, what was it, Delta Sharp? No, it's Delta. Uh, so Delta would have had to be 0, 0, 1, 0. Okay, so we have to look at Charlie and Alpha. So let's take a look. Charlie says the position of this digit, which is one, uh, matches the number of port plates. Now let's make sure that I saw all of the port plates. Um, there is only one port plate. Uh, SpaghettiOs, okay. All right, so we need to check that rule. And then for the Alpha, uh, the rule was the other number's fourth color, which is Echo, refer to a natural key, uh, which it definitely does. Okay, uh, let me check that both of these rules are actually the same. We've already checked the Charlie rule. Yep, number of port plates, and I think I already know what's wrong with that one, but this one here is a bit more mysterious. Sorry, it's the alpha rule, which is this one. The other number's fourth color referred to a natural key. Okay, so the other numbers, color, ah, wait, did, okay, two, one, okay, um, yeah, that, that, that should be fine, um, hmm, Okay, so let, let me go to the other one because I'm fairly certain I know what, what, what's wrong with the other one. So Charlie was the rule that says the position of this digit, which, ah yeah, bingo, it's missing the plus one again. This one has the plus one. I don't know if that's the one I added earlier, probably. Right here we have another one. So let me actually search for all of these. 
all occurrences of this. Uh, bingo, there's another one. Um, this one is correct. Right, these are correct. That should be plus one, plus one, plus one, plus one. Yes. Right, so all the other, okay, so we've uh, solved the mystery of the first one, so that's no longer a problem. But this one, I'm not sure why this is wrong. The other number's fourth color referred to a natural key. The other number's fourth color, right? The other number's fourth color. All right, so. The other number is Val's Prev. Oh. Okay, bingo. See, I need... No, it's not Valspro. That's from the previous stage. The other number... Ah, okay. So I completely forgot to actually compute... Oh, wait, wait. Color... Oh, no, 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 no. Right. All I need to do is just index into CLRs. Yes. So the colors in the current stage, according to the other number at the index of digits. This should be the uh, this should be correct. All right, so let's hope that we get another alpha, because that's the one we need to check. We need to uh, debug. Uh, yep, we do have an alpha in the third uh, the third flashing thing. So we have D B A C D sharp F G F sharp. All right, and the serial number does contain a vowel, so it's left first. Um, yeah, actually, let's write all of the uh, edge work. Uh, we have a PS2, we have uh, three batteries and two holders, DVI, RCA, and unlit SND. All right, let's put that here, batteries here, and port plates there. All right, and then delta is, if we're in the first stage, that the yes, there's an odd number of ports, that's yes, because it's three. Uh, a color in the other four digit number refers to F sharp, it's a yes. And now this one, the other number's fourth color, so that's an F sharp, so it's not natural. And then the position that's a four matches the number of port plates, no. Uh, delta sharp, if we're in the first stage, yes, there's an even number of batteries, that's a no, because it's three. Uh, this is the third or first, no, it's the second. Uh, golf. We are not in the second stage, yes, Foxtrot sharp. We are in the first stage, there is an even number of indicators, no. So 1100 zero, zero means that's a delta, and 0010 zero, zero, zero means that's a delta. So we expect delta delta. Let's take a look at the answer, and it's delta delta. Okay. Okay. So the question now is, you know, how often are we going to keep testing this? Um, until we're confident that it works. I, I'm genuinely tempted to say that at this point, it's unlikely that there are many more bugs. Like if anything, there's probably only gonna be like maybe one more. Um, in which case, I'm going to rely on my playtesters. So I'm going to publish this um, with rule seat support and hope that some people will play it. If you guys want, you can play it. And then, uh, you know, if you run into any problems, you can tell me. So I'm going to actually publish this now. So I'm going to compile this. And while it's compiling, I'm going to go here. This is the JSON for the website. And I'm going to say rule seed support supported. And just to make sure that that is the correct syntax. Yes, it is rule seed support supported. Yep. Okay. That is correct. So uh, I need to upload that along with the manual. Uh, the manual which has the uh, rule seed support thing in it. The rule seed, uh, the, you know, the JavaScript code. Um, that looks good. OK. I am going to go to the master branch. Actually, wait, before I do that, I want to... Ah, right, there was a change. Yeah, I added the word exactly, that's right. Um, that, that exactly thing doesn't occur in rule seed one, does it? 
Exactly. No. Okay. In that case, the PDF doesn't need updating. All right. So let's um, do a get rebase minus i head two. Close this and run that. So what I'm doing now is I'm looking at the last two uh, commits that I made, which are you know the rule seed support from uh, Wednesday and the one that I committed just now, and I want to uh, put them together into one change. So now, if I look at the version history, it'll be only one change. Simon Singh's rule seed support, and it contains the JSON as well as the word exactly here. There you go. OK, so now I can go to the uh, master branch. Uh, go to the master branch. And also, since the puzzle hustle is now over, I suppose I can actually delete that branch. Um, and I can merge the Simon Singh stuff into the master branch. And now that that's in the master branch, I can also delete the Simon Singh's rule seed branch. Uh, oh, I see. This is on the uh, uh, right. Uh, so delete this. Yes, force delete. And I also want to delete it on the. Uh, uh, origin on the um, the GitHub side of, of things. OK, and now I need to actually publish it. So let's recompile this. And um, oh, yeah, before I do that, I do actually want to set this back to 1. All right, and then apply, save, and then recompile. Not that this makes much of a difference. In fact, it makes no difference at all. But I'm a stickler. I'm a uh, Perfectionist. I'm going to say major change, add rule seed support. OK. Uh, Mario Xman has actually changed his name to Mario X Turn, so I'm going to change that as well while I'm at it. Um, all right. Yeah, since the PDF didn't change, that's all I need to do to. Uh, publish it, but of course I still need to update the uh, HTML version of this. Uh, Simon sings, Simon sings. All right. So now let's open Simon sings. Here we go. Ooh, lots of changes. That's probably because there were changes in the mod kit. Oh yeah, the test harness. Apparently the GitHub version still has the old test harness. So all of those changes are now going to be um, bundled. All right, let's close Unity. We're done with that. And now we have that problem. Uh, Simon Sings. All right, so I use these directory junctions and... Uh, oh, OK. Uh, stage that, I guess. Uh, let me just make absolutely sure that this is working. It's recompiling things. That's uh, not something I expected. But I suppose I can close Visual Studio at this point. It's a bit surprising that it takes this long, given that I, you know, I, I had it open just literally a minute ago. But um, right, let's just recompile that. And if there is no error here, then I'm satisfied. Right, that seems to work. OK, perfect. Yep, build complete. OK, let's exit that. And this has changed again. Oh, I see. OK, it added the test harness scripts, which ma makes sense. Um, so stage that. OK, um, so I want to uh, add uh, rule seed support and update test harness and mod kit. All right, so in Simon Singh's module, we have all of these changes. Yay. Hmm. OK, it seems that there is even more changes in here. It seems that I, I didn't commit to uh, GitHub. Oh, wow. Um, see, even the Twitch help message has changed, which, yeah, makes sense because I, all right, but. Um, Apparently, there were some other bugs that, that I um, fixed 
at some point and never committed to GitHub. But you know what? That's fine. It's not that important. Okay, Simon Sings now officially has rule seed support. Okay, and if you guys if you guys want to uh, test Simon Sings with rule seed support on your own uh, machine, I would be very much obliged. You know, if you could report any problems that occur, that'd be great. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, or suggestions, then hit me up on Discord or post a comment in the comment section if you're watching this on YouTube. Uh, in the meantime, happy diffusing, happy implementing, happy development, and I will see you around. Goodbye.